So now I'll do my best. Um, we know how well of a tech expert you are, aerodynamics, now heat as well, but uh, thermodynamics. But uh, in terms of the bike that for the Ghana record, this humpback whale inspired uh, our record bike, what was kind of the recent, well, the new developments being brought back into it or like brought into it? Where did that come from? Funny enough, actually, myself and Filippo, we had the exact same bike. Not, sorry, not the actual one, but like all of it, I was on the same size. They were all printed, same features, just mine was hidden away and never really saw the light of day. So, um, yeah, I got I was the first to ride that bike uh, and test it and get some good data on it, which is a pretty cool experience, riding around on a basically a 3D printed bike. It's quite, quite cool. Uh, the process itself began in... It was about March. It was a really tight timeline to the point where at first we were thinking, okay, we're not going to get a bike done in the time frame from March to August. It's just, it's way too intensive. Anybody who designs bikes or even builds bikes knows that the time scales of getting tooling made or molds and tooling and um, all the ISO testing it's got to go through plus the UCI approval. It's yeah, it's, it's not feasible. So that kind of opened up the door of why don't we go down 3D printing rather than carbon composite because it, it basically gave us about a three or four week window to design, develop, and test the bike, which is no, no small amount of effort. And it was um, a combination of a whole lot of very intelligent people coming together. Obviously, Pinarello have their own R&D department. Within Ineos Great Ideas, we have a number of different um, engineers and aerodynamicists. So Luca Argiano, who's um, probably the smartest aerodynamicist nobody's really heard of in the sport he is the brains behind so many things in cycling and yet he hides in the shadows uh, and he's yeah he's an incredibly good guy and he led on a lot of the, the idea uh, and then also Dimitris uh, Dimitris Kassanis who I'm sure people know from Metron uh, they, well, they, they printed the frame uh, he had a lot of ideas as well and it was basically just meeting after meeting and design work design meetings and wind tunnel tests CFD tests uh, and just doing all we can to fast track the process. So the humpback whale inspiration. So we were looking at a lot of different concepts. Well, um, and the one thing that's really powerful with CFD is you can understand where your drag is coming from. And put simply, the vast majority of your drag on a frame, at least when it's very optimized, comes from seat post and seat tube. It's about 30, 40% off the top of my head. So when you've got most of your drag coming from that area, that's typically for a reason. And when you look at it, you're getting a lot of separation because what's happening is the seat post and seat tube are sitting between your legs. You're pedaling. And that means you've got a leg forward and a leg rearward and that oscillates and alternates. So what happens with the airflow is it comes between your legs and then changes direction. So it's, as you say, your left leg is forward and your right leg is rearward. Onset flow would then turn behind the back of your left leg, which means the onset flow angle onto the seat post and seat tube is not straight ahead. It can be anything up to sort of 40, 45 degrees. Now, any normal airfoil would separate at that kind of angle. By separation, I mean, um, you induce a lot of drag off the airfoil because the flow is no longer attached to it. So what you can do is you can do a lot of different things if you want. You can change the profile. You can make it really fat, rounded airfoil. Or what well, the route we went down was the tubercles. So the intention it was to basically control flow separation at high onset flow angles. That's what the original study was done on. Um, and yeah, it works really well in, in that scenario. Um, hence why it's only on the seat tube and seat post and not everywhere because your legs aren't between the four or the down tube, the seat post sits right down the middle. Do you think this is something we're going to see introduced on bikes going forward now? <laughs> well, I hope it will be on all the Pinarello bikes pretty soon. So um, I think it will become more commonplace. Uh, I don't, it's not... It's not a silver bullet. You're not going to find 10, 20 watts there. It is a few watts, but that's what makes the difference. That's that's what we were chasing. We're already in a very optimized scenario. Um, probably as you get onto the road and things are a bit more variable. I don't know, it depends on the scenario. You may find a little bit more, a little bit less. It's definitely an improvement. Um, I expect you'll see a lot more of it out in the real world. Um, I imagine people start to look into different profiles, how they work with different rider leg shapes, different cadences. 
you know, you can start to optimize these things to the nth degree, but the big win was from the implementation of them as a shape. And then there's obviously a more optimization you could do around the shape of that and how that works with that frame, that rider, et cetera. So I think you're probably the best person in the whole world to ask this. Uh, <coughs> our record is unified now. All the kind mm -hmm. of different, uh, well, what would you say, the different variants of the rule, courtesy of, um, yeah, Boardman, the super Superman position bike as well, Graham Aubrey. But Ghana's beat it now. Yep. Do you think it's ever going to be even attempted or beat now, considering he kind of unified everything? Absolutely. Probably in the next two or three years. You think someone's going to beat it? I think someone will attempt it. And I, I know of some people who can beat it as well. It's it's not impossible. That's the thing. Like what he did was pretty epic. Obviously, he went a really long way in one hour. But Filippo is not superhuman. Like what he can do is capable of others if they're willing to commit. But you, it's not just a case of you can ride at the same power and let's say even on the road you had the same CDA as Filippo. That's two components. But the hour is significantly more complex than that. Hence why me, an athlete who probably, well, I'm not really top 10 in the world TT. Maybe I'd scrape a top 10 on a really, really good day. But not many of the guys who are finishing top 10 at world time trial could beat me in the hour record. So that step difference comes from the application of science and the understanding of the demands of that event and how you need to optimize around it. And there's so much that we did that I'm pretty sure other teams either wouldn't know about or wouldn't know where to start because they, they don't have that history within track and the and and the hour that Ineos has, or, or my background and my interest and my understanding of it either. And when we kind of applied that, we made a big leap forward in, in performance. I mean, from what I learned within the team, I found, yeah, 800 metres. And I will probably found Filippo, at least that, maybe more. So I think people can do it, but they probably probably will be surprised at how hard it is as a challenge. But I don't, I don't think it's going to stand for decades, that's for sure. I think... People come along and they will they will beat it. Do you think Ghana can beat it? Like, improve on it? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. It wasn't his best ride. I think he'd put his hands up and say that. I think we're quite confident from our analysis in the team. There's there's more there. Use a scary thought. Do you think 60... We, I asked you this before, but do you think 60 kilometres in one hour is doable? I've been asked this a few times. It's not impossible. I was the first one. I was the first one. It's so hard. So I, I would never say never. I'm not naive enough to claim there's some arbitrary limit because 60 kilometers is just a made up number when it comes down to it. Why not 60.1 or whatever it's, yeah, the number is kind of a bit irrelevant. So I think it can be beaten. I, I don't think we'd see 60 for, for decades, but it's not impossible. But for Filippo to go from where he went, I mean, quick numbers off the top of my head in the same conditions is like another 70 watts, maybe even a bit more, probably even a bit more than that. So you're talking somebody who can do an hour at north of 500 watts at a very good CDA.